doing good, you know, trucking along. <laughs> okay, we already have tried to start recording this. Here, so here's the takeaway from the last thing. Jen yeah. never says she's great. She always says trucking along. I'm wearing the same sweatshirt. I've now exposed that we were recording two in a row. That's it. Now you're all caught up. Yeah, it was quick. That was like a nice like 20 second catch up. You like that? Now yeah. everyone knows exactly what's happening. Okay. Hey, Um. well, you know, we always like to do our transitions. Today's Today's episode is about attraction ebbing and flowing in long-term relationships. This is very interesting. And so my connection that I'm going to make is <laughs> ebbing and flowing of making sense in this recording. I don't know. Wow. You know, I I think, <laughs> I don't know. I wish if you're watching YouTube, you could see Ebbs frozen. <laughs> Why do I look like Popeye though? You do look like Popeye. <laughs> Maybe Nikki will put this on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think that's the only place it can go. <laughs> hey, if you're not on Instagram, we got new merch. It's really nice. <laughs> yes. We have new merch. We have new therapists coming on. We do. We finally have openings in California. There's been a wait list forever. Forever. Um, so if you're in California and you've been looking for a therapist, we'd love to, feel free we'd love to, to reach to. on out. The therapygroup.com. Happy to help you. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people ask a lot of the same questions, which I think yeah. is very interesting, right? So basically, of all the questions we got, there was about 300 <laughs> that are asking how to tell the difference between attraction ebbing and flowing and just not being into them anymore. Mm. And if you could talk to your partner about this, right? And so like Nikki is the one who didn't, Nikki produces, she like compiles all this stuff. And she, all she wrote down was like, this is the same question 300 fucking times. And I guess what we're talking about is everyone's fear. Everyone's what I can get from everyone wondering that. Everyone's yeah. fucking scared. Everyone's scared. And I think, you know, clearly this is a common thing that happens. Yeah. And so just want to validate the fact that if you are feeling this way, this so often happens in relationships, um, especially long-term relationships, right? That it's very normal. You grow, you change over time. Things change in your relationship. Attraction changes. And so it is so, so natural for this to happen. Yeah. I think yeah. we got a, I think we got a lot of messages too, you know, in watching movies and the media that you are going to fall in love and your relationship is going to stay the same and you are going to be so hot and heavy for that person for the next 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> nobody. Okay. But when we got the messaging, nobody even were, was living into a hundred. Now everyone, it's like, oh, I'm so... living in 99, right? Jen just lost her grandfather at 99 I years old. 99. He was married Almost to my grandmother. Almost Almost, he would be, he would have been a hundred in a month. Um, he was married to my grandmother for 70 years. Like, I just can't even fathom that. How, wait, how old did they get married? Wait, what's the math on that? She's Listen, younger though. Your grandmother's younger. Not, not that she's 90. She's going to be 93. Wow. Isn't that wild? So she got married at 23. Yeah. 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 So she got married. She did get married young. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's nuts, right? And here's the difference. There was a really great quote I love by Terry, our friend Terry Real, um, that he talks about his dream is that he's at a cocktail party and he walks up to a couple and he says, how you doing? And they're totally honest, right? And so they say something along the lines of, well, you know, the first 10 years were pretty fucking good. The first five years were hot. The first 10 years were okay. We cheated on each other in the 12th. Um, and, you know, then we had kids that fucking hated each other. And then it took about five years to get out of that. And now we're doing pretty well. And like, that would be real. honest. That would be real. <laughs> and I would love to sit here. And if you are one of those people, you're listening to this and you're like, well, that's not my situation. We are great. I love that for you. Absolutely. I'm so happy for you. I've been with my partner for 13 years. I've been married for six and we went through fucking hell since becoming parents. It's been the most difficult thing I could have imagined. Um, we both tremendously change as individuals, as a couple, so many different things. This is what I do as a job. It all the time people are always like, so you must have a perfect relationship. But I'm like, Oof. what? <laughs> Doesn't it like feel like pressure in a way? Like because you're a couples therapist, you have and the to sex have, therapist thing. And a sex therapist, right? You have to have great sex and you have to have a great, incredible relationship. Yeah. But this is where we blow the lid off this. Yeah. All we are human. <laughs> yes. 
Did you guys not realize yet? I don't know if you realized, but yeah, we're probably human. by all the other episodes, they they clearly think we're really Thank together. God. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's go through this because this is the number one question. So we're just going to start off exactly with you. Um, how to discern whether it's ebbing and flowing or indicative of time to call it quits. The reality is, is I guess you'd have to say to yourself, what are the other receiving factors? It is completely natural for attraction and for sex, sexual desire to ebb and flow. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some factors we can look into for that. But when you think about it, is it time to call it quits? Do we feel like we're communicating about this? Do we feel like there's openness around it? Do we feel like we worked hard? Are, um, are there children, pets, shared um, assets, right? Like these are all things that we keep in mind, right? If I've been hanging out with someone for three months and I'm like, you know, already like not that interested and like, I'm going to probably fucking call it quits. Yeah. It's like it, it, everything happens within context, right? Like when you are married for a long period of time, obviously your relationship is going to change over time. Yeah. The things, right. So at the beginning when you're hot and heavy and you're in the honeymoon stage and you're having sex all the time um, and you're going out and you don't have stressors on your relationship, the things that attracted you to each other that make you feel really passionate towards each other are going to change over time. Yeah. So you said something important that I want to talk about, right? Which is everything Please. happens in context. So I want to talk a little bit about like the relevant aspects of context as it comes to um, sexual desire and attraction. Yes. Okay. First thing I'm going to have you check in about is your mental and physical well-being. My physical health, my body image, my mood, anxiety, distractibility, um, sexual functioning, right? So what that really talking about physical health. I re let's say that I recently got a diagnosis of Crohn's and I'm having a really hard time navigating that. I am probably going to have a little bit less of sexual desire. Normal. Let's say I just experienced um, uh, extreme weight, you know, like I, I experienced some type of uh, weight bias um, in healthcare system and, I, and it's really triggered my body image. Okay, that's might gonna add into it. Let's say that I've been struggling with my PMDD or my mood, my anxiety, right? Any of these things, that's going to affect it. So first, mental and physical well-being, I'm gonna have you check. The next thing I'm gonna have you do is to actually consider your partner's characteristics. Did I recently realize that I am way more attracted to women than men and I happen to be married to a man? Gonna probably affect some stuff, right? Have I realized that um, I don't feel like my partner um, uh, showers as much as I'd like them to, or they keep their hair longer and I prefer a shorter style. Um, uh, let's say my partner isn't working on their mental health and they're not growing and they're doing a lot of numbing behavior. That's kind of a turnoff. That's going to all go into that. Relationship characteristics. Has there been a breach of trust? For some people, actually, when there is infidelity, we can see an increase in attractiveness and desire. A lot of times that comes out of fear and anxiety towards like the actual relationship. So that's something that can go into it. Um, let's say power dynamic. I always saw my partner as this really strong wet uh, breadwinner. They got laid off and they're having trouble finding work. Does that change some stuff for me? Right. Um, emotional connection. I've been trying really hard to connect with my partner and they're not letting me in. That might make it that I'm more attracted to them because I'm chasing them or less. Um, a habit of I don't feel desired. How about that my partner often rejects my advances towards being um, sexual or romantic with them? Okay. Now the next setting. What, or so now the next context is setting. We have public or private. What if I'm someone who's really uncomfortable with PDA? My partner's trying to kiss me in public, but that's really uncomfortable for me. I, I don't like being seen, right? Um, uh, let's say I'm at work versus vacation. How many more people enjoy their sex life on vacation? Besides Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. Uh, Everyone. I, was that a rhetorical <laughs> question? <laughs> we were we were talking with someone the other day who said, you know, what they have figured out is they go on vacation once a month with their spouse, and that's when they have really great fucking sex. And the rest of the time, they don't put any pressure on it, right? Um, so work vacation, right? That context, um, is there distance involved? Are we comfortable? If there is distance involved, are we comfortable using technology, phone, zoom, different stuff to have sex? Um, how about if I see my partner do something really positive, like interacting with family? 
Mm-hmm. That's a big turnoff for me. Any of these Pet, stuff can petting, like really go. Petting dogs on the street. That is attractive. I know. Right. Um, okay. Then there's other life circumstances. Let's say at the holidays, let's say there's like work related stress, any of that kind of stuff and they go into it. Um, and so these are all the relevant contexts. And Emily Nagalski talks about this a lot more in her book, um, Come As You Are. We always, always, always recommend it. We have it on our website. We've talked about it a million times. We've had her on the show to talk about her other book, Burnout. Emily Nagalski's Come As You Are is a really great place to start because this is all the relevant aspects of context. So Jen goes into this thing that everything happens in context. Let's say you just listen to all that shit and you're like, okay, no, this is good. And this is good. And this is good. And you're still having lack of desire and attraction towards your partner. We're going to talk about that. But first, before you freak out about it, let's check in with you. Go through those things I just talked about to like really be like, okay, maybe having a lack of desire and attraction right now is kind of normal for what I'm going through. And okay. also what I hear you say, Em, is the amount, I mean, that that doesn't even just like scratch the surface, no, but the nothing. amount of things that can affect your desire and your attraction. It's so funny, right? Because like nobody told us that part. No, no, they did not. I was just like, because I was like pretty horny when I was like 14, right? Like I was just like, I'm just going to be horny forever. Our hormones were just raging through raging. our body. You're like, I want to dry hump everything. Like that's like a very normal puberty thing, right? And then no one really tells you is that like you could be sitting in bed with your partner who you love and you're so grateful for and you think that they're the fucking bee's knees and you don't want to do anything. You just want to be on your phone. <laughs> So it also brings back another thing we do need to talk about, which is that arousal precedes desire. That often for many of us, as we get older and as we're in long-term relationships, I don't just feel horny. I have to have some type of arousal that goes into it. So keep these things in mind. If we're not having settings that like welcome sex and the context of relaxation, all that stuff... It may not just be so much about attraction towards your partner and more just like this is my own sexual thing going on, going on with me or going on with us. Yes. And to know, like for you to be very conscious of like, what are, what are the contexts that help support this for me? What is really important for me to have um, in my life uh, in order for me to feel more sexual desire um, and attractiveness towards my partner? Like, I know for me, I can be like so unbelievably stressed out at work and be okay and having sexual desire. But if I'm having really bad body image, I have nothing. Mm. Right. So like for some people though, stress at work is like absolutely no fucking way. Oh yeah. Right. But like for me, like my number one trigger is going to be like difficult body image times. Mine's being tired. (laughs) And the fact of the matter is your girl's always tired. (laughs) The girl's always, she is, she's she always is. tired, she's right? She's a sleepy lady. Yeah. So you're like, okay, so the time is between 6 a.m. and well, what, what do you wake up eight, nine? Sorry. 6 a.m. <laughs> oh, that's just me. It's my you wake up, up time. That's your wake up time. 6 a.m. A small way. like a 10 minute window. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's got to get into those 10 minutes. Right. But does that, does that mean you're less attracted to him? Not at all. Not it means you have less sexual desire. Right. Exactly. It's, it's more about me than it is about my partner um Um, and I think we always think that our partner should be responsible for making us feel around you know what I mean like and that's not true like it's actually our individual responsibility yeah and then to communicate with our partner about how to encourage this more so this goes back to that question we first started with is how to discern whether it's ebbing or flowing or indicative time to call it quits what's the context going on what was it like before? Also, what's the sex that I'm having, right? The reality is, is like, never am I once am I like, you know what I'd love is a, she's not, I mean, if I'm stoned, then maybe, but like, no, I, I'm not usually like, I'd like a Wawa hoagie, right? Like, that's like my backup hoagie. Yeah. I'm not craving it. Right. You know, there's other hoagies. I'm like, man, I can't wait till I get down the beach and I can have this, right? Like, but like, if something's kind of mediocre, You're not going to be that interested. And so am I doing things that not only excite me in my sex life, but also my relationship? Do we laugh together? Do we have fun together? Do we go on dates together? What are we actually doing to have excitement that's going to keep pulling me back? I also want to dispel the myth that 
like I think there's this big idea about like why can't we get back to what it used to be when we first started dating that does not happen (laughs) and I want to take a moment for all of us listening to grieve that time (laughs) right because that does not happen to get back to that place and that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing because that was a time in which Things were fun, exciting. You didn't know everything about each other. You weren't farting in front of each other yet, right? Like there was so, there are so much that happened in that time, that history that makes your relationship what it is now keeps you from going back there. And so even though your attraction or your sex life might be different than what it was. It does not mean it's bad, but I just want to dispel the myth that it can somehow get back to where it was. And the thing is that, and and you could actually end up having much better sex than what you had in the beginning, but you're right. It doesn't go back to zero. It starts somewhere new. And so this is about how do I, and let's say that there is something going on in a relationship that you need to end this version of your relationship and move on to something else. And maybe the next version of relationship involves a lot more communication about sex and desire. Yes. That's just what I was going to say. It's like, I think, you know, this, here's, here's another question and we can get into this. Do we talk, talk to our partners about this or is it hurt hurtful? Should we save this for therapy instead? And I think what's your, what's your answer to that? Yeah. Well, I think the first thing you have to figure out is like, what's affecting the attraction right? So like to go through that list and first figure it out for yourself. Um, I think that absolutely having a conversation about it is important, right? To be able to say like, hey, I'm just noticing that like my sex drive is not as higher because it is not as high because I'm exhausted at the end of the day. I feel really stressed. Um, You know, like it's been really hard for me that you haven't been showering as much. Like I want to feel connected to you. And sometimes when you're clean, I feel way more connected Mm -hmm. to you. There's ways to express it to your partner where you are expressing to them. I want to feel close to you. I want to feel connected to you. What are there things that we can work on together to get to that place? Yeah. Right. There's ways to be kind about it and clear about it and not hurtful. Mm -hmm. Right. And not cruel. Yeah, And so I want you to think about how are the ways in which I can communicate about some of this to my partner, because as opposed to it being a me versus you problem, it can be a, let's work on this together. Yeah. Let's figure this out together. So the mindset is the us, right? Like I actually want us to start having really fucking awesome sex. I actually want to be super hyped to see you when I get home. And then, so what's the personal responsibility I'm taking? And then what's the responsibility we're taking as a couple for us? And so, yeah, someone else, how do you comfortably and kindly tell your partner you're feeling this way? Hey, I'm struggling with stuff right now. I think I need a little excitement in our relationship. I don't need to say I'm struggling with my attraction to you, you dig that. I can say like, I think, right, like for your head to be like, hey, I know that my attraction and my desire is better on vacation, excitement, date nights, when there's music, when we have candles, when things are clean, right? Like you can take responsibility for that and be like, you know what? I really think that we need to take a vacation. I really think that we need to take a date night out. I think that we need to, um, as opposed to being on our phones at night, to play some music in our bedroom and light some candles and see what happens. Yes. But there also has to be, like, if I feel this pressure of not being attracted, if if I'm feeling, like, less attracted to my partner, and then I feel a pressure that I have to do something for them, that is going to make me pull away hard. Yes. Oh yeah. And so I, I, I love that, right? Like if you can figure out what are the things that might lead to me being more attracted to my partner, right? Is it feeling more emotionally connected to them? Is it, you know, is it like we can go out on dates or we go on vacation? Just like we're saying, like figure out what it is first. It might be different um, than what you expect it to be. I think we talk about socially, we talk about attraction as like, I'm just physically attracted to this person and attraction comes in a million different forms. So figure out what that looks like for you and figure out, is it you being attracted to yourself and what, how connected you feel to yourself? Um, or is it you being attracted to your partner? How connected you want to feel to your partner and then be able to communicate through that. Yeah. How do I accept this as normal versus beat myself up when this happens? You're going to have to listen to this episode every time, maybe. Yes. You're going to have to keep giving yourself reminders. And then it also goes right into what someone else said, which is how do I not compare to other couples? You 
actually have no idea what's happening with other couples. I don't give a shit if they tell you. I don't give a shit if they post about it. I don't give a fucking shit if you live next door to them and you can hear them in the bedroom. You have no idea what is actually happening to other people. So when that goes in your head of, oh, comparing yourself, you have to say, this is a story I'm telling myself. Yes. This and is not real. Yeah. You never know what's happening behind closed doors. I would wonder what what do you think the purpose is that you are comparing yourself to other couples? Yeah. What is What are you trying to give to yourself? Sometimes we do that as a way to protect ourselves from the things that we're missing in our relationship. Mm -hmm. So what that tells me is possibly that you want to feel more connected, right? You want to have more sex. You want to be more attracted to your partner. The way in which you're managing that envy or that jealousy is to compare yourself to other couples. So I want you to channel that energy towards your relationship and say, how can I get the things that I am missing in my relationship? And what would that look like for me? What would yeah. be different? Yeah. I like what you just talked about though, is that like, Hillary, like if it's upsetting you, like it means something to you, yeah. right? Like, and like that enough is a no and to be like, hey, like this is very, very normal. But I think especially for women, we've just been giving, we've been given so much like ideas about like what we should be doing in the relationship right like I say like I like to do something like intimate like every few days with my partner it makes me feel closer I think it's important that does not mean sex I I don't think I could have sex every other day <laughs> that no not for nope. me no nope. but, but maybe for others but for others right but something intimate, right? Like some type of connection and touch point. Like I think that's like pretty important for me. Yes. And to think about like, what are the things, I mean, I know we're specifically talking about sex, but like intimate, right. Can be like, I would just like a hug. Right. I would, you know, what really went out the window when in, in long-term making out just like dry humping, dry humping, dry humping never gets enough credit. <laughs> never does. Truly. Really? So especially with pants on. Yeah. <laughs> jeans <laughs> who doesn't love a jean on jean dry humping that is that's a middle school shit in a no, no one else was doing that middle school yeah, yeah no everyone was the second i everyone said that i was, was like oh maybe that was just me <laughs> no no it was everyone and it was in a basement <laughs> doesn't matter whose <laughs> someone's basement so someone's. i want you tonight go into your basement <laughs> put on some jeans <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining myself in my unfinished, disgusting, like hoarded out basement. With jeans on. Just waiting. <laughs> I just imagine myself in a pair of jeans. What? Yeah, not a thing. I'm into fancy no. sweatpants these days. Yeah, you really are. Um, okay, I like this one. How long do the ebbs and flows usually last? How do we rekindle some sort of attraction? Let's start with the context. Do I have a hundred percent of those issues? It might take a while. <laughs> <laughs> it might, right? <laughs> But how do I rekindle some sort of attraction? What are you actively doing? It doesn't passively come along. Yeah. If I have to see my partner in a different light, I have to give us the opportunity to be there. And to also take the time to prioritize your relationship. And I know that that's really, really hard when you have children, when you have expenses, when you have a job that takes over. It's so important to really carve that time out for your relationship, even if it doesn't mean every time you're carving out that time, you feel attracted, but at least you're prioritizing that space for the two of you to be able to get to that place. Mm -hmm. So I think it might correlate with how much you are prioritizing your relationship, how much you are communicating about, I really want to work on this and I want to work on this together. Um, for the two of you to really be able to tackle this as a couple, I think the quicker you can pull yourselves out of this place. Yeah. Okay. The, here's a great one. Feeling less attracted to my partner when they're going through a period of depression. So it's normal. Normal. I get it. It's really, really hard when your partner is struggling with any type of health. Yeah. And how do I give space for that and one have less expectations for them and for me during that time? And what does it look to sort of like actively work in the rekindling through that? It's unrealistic to say that your partner struggling with their mental health doesn't affect your relationship. It's going to. And to know that you're 
it's not just your partner struggling with your their mental health. It's you're on that journey together. Yeah. You really are. And so I think that what happens sometimes is that you might react to that as, oh no, like I'm not attracted to them because they're depressed. That means something's wrong in the relationship. But to look at that, this is a period of time, right? Like a period of time that your partner is struggling with something. How can you take care of yourself during that time so you can be supportive of your partner um, without taking it into this is so, there's something wrong with the relationship. And mm. I know that that is not easy, That, but it's also a signal that this might be a time to also take care of yourself um, because that can be hard on a relationship. It really can. And if you can really take care and support yourself, you can also be there for, for your partner and know that that's going to be a period of time where your relationship might change. Yep. All right. I really like this question. I have to Tell do me. it. I'm ready. My husband is balding and I'm freaking out because you do not feel very attracted to him right now. Help. Okay. Here's the hard conversation we have to have, especially to my ladies in heterosexual relationships. Would you like if your partner was less attracted to you for your changing body, we have become way more aware of the damages of diet culture and obsession with physical appearance, especially when around women. But I often don't hear the same thing when it comes to men. Yeah, It is not fair to us project that onto them. I would also say with changing something, somebody starting to bald, someone starting to have that, that's not how they're going to look long-term. It looks really different, right? Yeah. But the same thing I would say if somebody came to me and said, I, my partner gained weight, I'm less attracted to them. I would say, I guess we have to expose you to some different size bodies. And I would have them do truly the, the exercise of looking at lots of different bodies and understanding yeah. that like you can be hot and sexy, like in all different ways. Yes. So you might need to be doing a little Bruce Willis check-in. You yes. might be doing a little bald man hottie stuff. Yes. But I want you to keep in mind is that like, if relationships are for life, if that's what we choose, we're choosing long-term, we have to be with our partner's body changing and our body changing. And that sucks because the other thing about happening to my partner, especially when it comes to stuff um, like balding, wrinkles, body changing, it also brings us up about older. Yes. And women do so many things to look young that men don't do. And the fact of the matter is, I don't care how much Botox you put in your face, you're going to get fucking older. I also would be curious how this person feels about their own body changing, just as we're, as yeah. we're talking about this, right? That, um, yeah, if you're in this for the long haul, you're going to change and your partner is going to change physically. It's yeah. going to happen. It's impossible for it not to. Yeah. And so I love what you're saying about exposing yourself to different types of bodies. Yeah, like who's the hot bald guy you think of? I thought of Bruce Willis. Who's yours? Who's your hottie baldy? Hottie baldy. Nikki's husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nikki, when you listen to this, you can choose to edit that out or not. <laughs> Welcome, John. <laughs> Congratulations, Jane. <laughs> Oh, but I think, I think it's true. Once again, I think this also goes back to this um, preconceived idea about like who we're going to be with and what they look like. And this is, and when you hold on to that too strongly, you end up being disappointed as opposed to like, how can my, how can my ideas about what my partner looks like change over time with my partner changing over time? Yeah. Yep. Um, are you ready for Dear Em and Jen? I'm so ready. Thank you but for you, reading all of these, by the way. You want me to read them? Yeah, I do, because I'm done. I didn't you've bring been, water up here been, today. It's right, it's right. Also, we've been recording for so long. <laughs> the sun has totally it shifted. Completely. I mean, blinded. I would love if to you say. If you're watching like... this on YouTube, you will see me go from this to this. It's, I would say it's golden hour, but it's like on another level. <laughs> okay. 
I recently found your podcast after listening to you on off the vine and I'm obsessed. Thank you. I've been binging all of your episodes and love you guys so much. Thank you. We love you. We love you. Anyway, my question is, do you believe in the right person? Wrong time. I met this amazing guy in a very romantic way and fell fast, but right before we met, he got a job across the country and is moving in two weeks. We'll be a six hour plane ride away. And I can't help, but feel so frustrated that the connection is so strong, but physically he'll be so far. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for all that you do. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. My answer is yes. Yes. One million percent. I believe in right person, wrong time. Yeah. The cliche saying that timing matters is so true. Unfortunately. Yeah. It matters so much because you might meet a person that personality wise, values wise, all of it lines up, but you might be in completely different places in your lives, Yeah, which can, which matters. And it matters in terms of it. Like it will affect your relationship. If you were to try, it's like fitting a square peg into a round hole. Now, if you've listened to the show long enough, you know that I'm obsessed with Drew Barrymore to the point where I don't talk about it often. I consider myself a closeted Drew Barrymore fan, but, and I don't even just meet her as a person. I actually meet her acting. <laughs> I love her. I feel like everyone's obsessed with her person. I'm like, no, what's, no, no. I mean like her, like, you what's know, her best her acting what's, skills. What's, what's your favorite movie? I'm sorry well, to interrupt. Um, uh, oh, there's so many good ones. I don't have a favorite. Absolutely not. But there's a Drew Barrymore one. If you haven't seen it called going the distance, it's not one of her more popular ones. I know that one. Yeah. And very similar situation, right? Yeah. But I, I actually like because it normalizes how fucking hard it is yeah. and how you have so much excitement at first to be like, we're going to make this work and we're going to visit and it's going to be awesome. We're going to have phone sex. And like, and like at first, like that feels romantic. But like the reality is, is like, it's unbelievably hard. It just is. So like, yes, absolutely. Right person, wrong time. And you get to decide what you do with that. Do we want to try? Do we want to go visit a few times? Do we want to not put restrictions on dating and still talk, right? Like there is lots of different stuff. And the coolest thing about like the, being an adult in this world is like you actually get to make your own rules for that relationship, whatever right. you want those rules to be. And I think people so often may put um, kind of these ideas, especially in long distance of, oh, how is that ever going to work? You're never going to be able to figure that out. You get to decide if you guys can figure that out or not. Yeah. You know, some people can do it. Some people can't. So you get to figure that out. And I think we let outside influences infiltrate that sometimes. And so if you guys can make it work, make it work. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's, it's absolutely believe in, in right person, wrong time. Mm. Um, Hey, I'm going to just have to do a few more plugs, which is like our merch is good right now. Y'all. <laughs> Emily's and living in it. And a great way to support the show is actually by buying merch, which is yes. that, you know, when we put out free content on here, on Instagram, we love absolutely everything we do. And, um, you know, check out some merch if you want to find another way to support the show and tell other people about the show. Because if you walk around in a really cool fuck it, feel it sweatshirt or know yourself, grow yourself, any of those things that people say, hey, that is, what is that? You could be like, let me tell you about this podcast, Shrink Chicks. Yes. Um, because one of the ways we also normalize mental health is by getting this podcast out so we can connect you with amazing clinicians if you're in the States of... Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Florida, California. Hopefully, hopefully very soon. There's many more coming, actually. Yes, absolutely. Yes. We're very um, but, excited. And also, we've had a wait list in California for forever. We are finally able to open that up um, at the end of March. So I guess that's when this episode comes out. I have no fucking idea. But if it's <laughs> in March, we're open. Um, so I hope you liked this episode today, even if it made you ebb and flow about your attraction to us. Um <laughs> That was a bad one, right? I loved it. I mean, it was better than my outro in the last one. I was like, what am I saying? <laughs> so if you decide that you like this episode, we ask you to let normalize how hard relationships are. And a great way to do that is by sending this episode over to a friend and say, hey, this shit relates to me. Does it relate to you and your relationship? Because the only way we will start having normalizing conversations is if it starts with every single one of us. Because as you all know, my favorite quote is, if not me, then who? And if not now, then when? So let's start doing that today. Let's be honest about how hard this is and different ways that we can make it better and ebb and flow with it together. 
together. So we hope you enjoyed today's episode. You could always rate, review, follow, subscribe on Apple Podcasts. You could follow us at um, Shrink Chicks or the Therapy Group GRP on Instagram. Um, you can watch us on YouTube. You can watch the sun go from miles across my face in this episode apparently today <laughs> and that is the last time that we record at 2 30 in the afternoon <laughs> um <laughs> um uh, hey i don't know fucking we'd love to connect you with a therapist we'd love to help you in any way that you need you can always reach out to us hello shrinkchicks.com contact the therapy group.com we will see you next week um on shrink chicks um we love you and don't forget that to grow yourself you got to know yourself we'll talk soon Hey!